Okay, welcome. This is the first video in the series of how to use Unity Pro to program a uh, modicon processor. I'll just get started here. Uh, start it by using File, New, and you, it brings up your list of different processors, your M340s, Premiums, Quantums, and I'm going to select an M340. I'll select the Modbus Ethernet M340 and it's going to just build a project around that processor with all of the bits, variables, and features that that processor will have. And over here on the left it has your project browser, uh, which, which is where you navigate through your project. You have your hardware configuration, your uh, derived data types, derived function blocks, uh, variables and other instances, um, motion, communication, which is your networking, your actual program, animation tables, operator screens, and documentation. And there will be uh, different videos on, on these various different uh, features in, in the project browser. What I'm going to do is just uh, configure my hardware here by uh, expanding out the PLC bus and then right clicking on the rack and going to open or I could have double clicked on the rack. Um, by default it gives you an 8 slot rack and a CPS 2000 power supply. If you want to change the rack you click double click on this uh, zero box here which means rack zero. Um, you want to uh, select your your rack and uh, if you want to change the power supply just click on it, hit delete and then double click on the first slot there and you can select the power supply and put it in. Okay, uh, your processor is in the next slot here and it, if you highlight it, it shows you which processor it is and if you highlight the port, that shows you it's the serial port and you can double click there to configure your serial port parameters. That one's your Ethernet port and you can configure that. Um, you notice because I have my rack open, my hardware catalog down here appeared and so I'm just going to quickly drag some cards in, my DAI1604, my DAO1605, and I'll expand out analog, select my AMI0810, my AMO0410, and uh, that's how you put your cards in. To configure a card, uh, we're going to double click on it and I'll go to the actual name of the card there. Gives you the description of the card, what voltages and uh, that sort of thing. If I click on my IO objects tab, that's where I'm gonna start my configuration of it. There's a whole bunch of check boxes here, different uh, things that you can configure around that card, uh, different data points and that sort of thing that you can get. And if you hit F1, go to your help screen and go into the details of areas in the IO objects tab you'll find what all those different variable checkboxes are and how to use those. What I'm going to do is just use my percent %i because it's a, that's my actual physical input channel. And I'll update my grid and it lists all those with the addresses. And you see it's the IEC style address because Unity is an IEC style package. I have my percent %i 0.1.0. Percent %i for physical input, uh, 0 uh, is the rack, one is the slot, and zero is the point on the on the card. Uh, again, it's IEC based, and an M340 is a zero based processor. Now, because I have that first point, I can come over here to my name, type in pump one running, maybe put in a comment, feedback and then I'll click create and it's actually going to create a tag name and a comment for that point and I could go down and do that with all of my other points. And then when I go into my variables I would be able to see those and uh, in my logic I would be able to address my points as the the meaningful tag name or the address. Um, if I close that one Go into my analog input card. Analogs have just a little bit more configuration. Again, I can do my uh, same thing here. I'll do my percent IW for my analog input card and update grid. 
and then I could put a, uh, a meaningful tag name in each of those. And create. Now, um, if I go into my, my actual channels there, you see each one of these channels on this card independently can be uh, configured as plus or minus 10 volts, 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 20 milliamps, 4 to 20 milliamps, plus or minus 20 milliamps. So that configuration can be done. We can also click here and configure the scaling. 0 would be 0, 100% might be 500 PSI, and um, now that has uh, scaling associated with it, so you don't have to go do that in Logic, which is pretty nice. Um, moving on, uh, the other thing that I need to configure on my hardware is my network. So I'll go to communications and under uh, networks, I'll right click, new network, I'll select ethernet. It gives me the name ethernet underscore one. I can change that if I desire. Uh, call it CP, CPU ethernet and uh, click OK. It gives me my network. I can double click there. Uh, by default, it has a model family of NOE. I want to select CPU. You notice when you select CPU, I have IO scanning and other uh, utilities here. That's all going to go away. You have to have the NOE for those utilities. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that the CPU will actually do, uh, it, it'll communicate Modbus TCP to any other device, but the only extra it'll do is SMTP. Uh, give it an IP address here, 192.168.000.010, uh, my subnet mask, and then if I had a router or a gateway, I would put that in there. Okay, so I validate and close that. And you notice it has a little red squiggly next to my network. That means I have not linked it yet. Uh, what, what you have to do is go back now into the actual uh, physical port of the CPU. Click on channel 3. Select Ethernet TCP IP as the function and then link it to CPU Ethernet. Now if you don't have the choice there of uh, the network that you created, that means when you created the network that you did not actually go uh, at the top and select CPU instead of NOE. So I'll select my network, close and validate that. And now you notice my, uh, my network here does not have a red squiggly. It has a, a little green check mark next to the network. So that's all good. <coughs> um, I'm actually going to try to keep this video a little bit shorter, so we'll talk about uh, the program uh, and the sections and the languages in a different video. Um, if I go into my elementary variables, I can see that my uh, variables that I created on my I.O. cards are here, and to create new variables I can just type in um, a name and then select the type that it is. You notice the uh, the point that came in from my card is an e bool, an enhanced bool. By default, when I created this, it made it a bool. Now, the difference is the e bool actually takes up 8 bits of memory rather than 1 bit, like a normal uh, Boolean. Uh, it has some history associated with it so that you can uh, use it for uh, rising and falling edge one shots, and you can uh, force and unforce. So if, if it's a going to be a variable that you want to be able to force it or do one shots with it, you want to make it an e bool and not leave it as a bool. So we can select that. <clears throat> now with the address, uh, if it's something that you're um, never going to want to uh, talk to it with a, an HMI or a, a SCADA package, uh, you can leave it without an address. That's called an unlocated variable. Some SCADA packages and HMIs through OPC will still be able to talk to it by its tag name, but for the majority of them, if you want to talk to it with SCADA or HMI or some other device, it's going to have to have a Modbus address associated with it. So you'd want to locate it with an address. Uh, you can also give it a, an initial value here. Um, let's see. 
we will uh, have other videos on the other parts of the project browser. For now, I just want to cover a couple more things about the software itself, a couple um, things that you'll need to know. Uh, up at the top, it says no name and it has an asterisk. No name means that we have not given the project a name yet. An asterisk means that it's not saved. So if I click on my save button, I'll give it a, a name here. I'll call it uh, initial video and save. And now my initial video will show up at the top here instead of no name and my asterisk will go away because it's saved. Now if I make a change, say I add another another variable Now my initial video is still there as the project name, but I've got my asterisk back because the project is not saved since I've made changes. So I just click on save again. So that asterisk tells you that you're, you're uh, not saved. Now, the next thing after that, it tells you that I'm in my data editor. <clears throat> if I go to my PLC bus, it tells me I'm in my PLC bus. And you notice as I have different, uh, different windows open, it gives me tabs where I can scroll back and forth down here where I I don't have to continue opening and closing things all the time I can easily navigate through my project with those tabs um, down here on the bottom it tells me I'm open in uh, read write mode that I'm offline I'm not online with the PLC has the address of the PLC if I do want to go online and it says that I'm not built now before I can uh, write the project to a PLC. I actually have to uh, compile it. So if I do a build, rebuild all project, <coughs> it'll go through and now it says built and it says I have zero errors and zero warnings. If you get warnings, you don't have to worry about warnings. Um, you, you can look at them uh, obviously and see what they are, make sure that they're nothing that you would want to fix but uh, a warning will not keep you from running your PLC um, an error will keep you from compiling and downloading um, let's see I'm going to end the video at this point and we'll start over with a, a different video with some more features thank you I hope this was helpful to you